So let's continue. Excuse me for the Again, slow delay. Mm -hmm. Where is the, the mouse? Don't fix. Oh. On the right side, just to the right. Down, 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 down. No. No. Maybe you can use Alt Tab. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we should be able to continue with the Blender in mathematics teaching. Okay, thank you for your help. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we are fr from Mexico, and I appreciate the opportunity to share uh, our work about uh, how we are using Blender. We are using Blender for commercial purposes, and we, because uh, in Mexico we consider there are in this moment a very important problem, like maybe in all the world, and this problem is the education in all levels. Uh, in Mexico, there are uh, more or less uh, 30 million of uh, students in all levels. And the last year, we began uh, a, a project uh, about uh, learning and teaching mathematics. In one part of this project, we use, no, in two parts, we use a Blender. I would like uh, to, uh, to share how we are doing this part. In, in, the, in this talk, uh, we are going to show two short uh, movies. Okay, uh, our objective in this, pay, in this case is uh, uh, present how our company is developed a system for learning and teaching mathematics in secondary school. Secondary school in Mexico is uh, students between 12 and 15 years old, and there are six millions in Mexico. Uh, our comp we, we are a company. Our company is near on Mexico City, and we had a big uh, market in near in Mexico. In this case, uh, our system is called Open Mathematica. Uh, the name because we are using Blender uh, specifically. Uh, my name is Jaime Aguilar Ortiz, and my partner Hector Daniel Arroyo Magaña. We are two of five partners. In, in Mexico. Uh, our company actually have uh, 35 uh, persons, people, uh, 20 are uh, designers, some are teachers, marketers, and programmers. Uh, open Mathematics, uh, we consider, is an innovative project uh, with AINS. General is designed uh, educational recourses for teaching and learning mathematics in secondary level. Uh, we uh, meet the math uh, programs of the uh, uh, education in Mexico. We use uh, the programs, the curricula. And uh, we using three technologies in this part. One part that is Blender. Other part is uh, augmented reality. And the uh, last part is web semantic. In this talk, we are going to uh, show you about a uh, blender only. Uh, why uh, open mathematical systems? In this uh, slide, we can see two graphs that show us uh, the problem that education in Mexico. Uh, the graph uh, left in, in, in your left showed us the position of Mexico about an index of talent uh, 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 considered in the world. And uh, we can find uh, the position of Mexico uh, with some opportunities. In the other graph, uh, we can uh, see uh, that e, e a community or a country had a high index a talent index, it is related with the rich of, of the people. This is the main reason because we are using a uh, blender. Blender uh, gives us an opportunity to solve uh, or to help to solve 
uh, a very important problem. Yes? Okay. Um, what is the objective of open mathematical systems? Integrated technology, see, 3D, because uh, students like uh, movies, like television, like uh, technologies, and we decide to integrate 3D uh, technologies with Blender uh, because it's free. Uh, for us, it's very uh, possible to, try, uh, to work with uh, Blender. Uh, other part, integrating augmented reality uh, with uh, some activities to help learn uh, skills and knowledge uh, in mathematics. And in this part, we too use uh, Blender like a tool, uh, integrate in, in, uh, uh, augmented reality and Blender. Finally, uh, integrated semantic web uh, um, to, to try to develop a website uh, with a uh, put together all the resources at our project. Uh, we had, uh, I am a, um, a professor, my original uh, uh, career is mathematics, and I teach mathematics actually in, in post degree in Mexico, but I know the problems in all levels. And first, we try to uh, con uh, uh, develop a, a pedagogical and technological model for our project. Our project is uh, based in a pro curricula of Boru, uh, public education in Mexico. And this uh, curricula uh, put uh, for uh, math skills uh, for the life. The field is uh, a capacity to solve problems. The second um, skill and knowledge is the capacity to uh, solving using math problems and communicate solution problems and match them in different uh, techniques in mathematics, all for uh, secondary students. Uh, after uh, this part, we, we uh, had three, uh, five parts in our project. The first part is um, uh, do short movies using Blender. In each movie, uh, we try to uh, solve a problem we cut uh, different characters, and these characters in the light in, in the movie try to solve problems using math. Other part are digital books. Uh, other part is activities in augmented reality. Uh, other part is a management system for help uh, to teachers how to apply this part, or how, how to apply all the systems. Uh, and the last part is put uh, these resources in a website. Okay. Uh, uh, Open Mathematica had uh, or will have the next year the following components: uh, 45 short fields. More or less, uh, each field uh, had uh, between eight and 15 minutes. In this uh, talk, we are going to show two of them. Three digital textbooks, uh, 45 math topics uh, with augmented reality, assistant management to help teacher, uh, an interactive web port, uh, website. Uh, uh, we are going to show you uh, two of our examples. The first uh, example. Uh, it's a, a short movie uh, with in eight minutes, eight or nine minutes. And this uh, movie uh, tried to about some characters, and these characters solve problems using equations. Uh, specifically, uh, with this movie, we try uh, the following skills, solve problems, involving the posing and solving of linear equation uh, of the four x plus eight e equal b, x uh, times b equal b, a x plus b equal c, using the properties of the quality a, b, c, integers or decimals. Okay, uh, we are going to see this movie.
Make sure the problem. Okay. para que no la podamos ver. Tranquila, Lunis. Podemos prender el radio. Corre, ve por él. ¿Y yo por qué? ¡Auch! ¿Por qué no te fijas? Fue tu culpa porque no quisiste ir por él. Así que no me digas nada. Ay, como sea. Ya levántate y va a buscarlo. Seguramente ya comenzó la pelea. Ya está, con el perico se dieron en la primera caída. Y aunque son de una batalla campal... Las luces artimañas de vento duplicaron a su... ¡No puede ser! ¡Ya terminó la primera caída! ¡Te lo dije! ¡Eres débil y jamás podrás conmigo! ¿Qué? ¡No cantes victoria! ¡Te recuerdo que yo soy más inteligente que tú! ¡Vente le mando un fuerte corazón! ¡Oh! ¡El tata regresa de su poder por otro! ¡Oh! Los zumbidos de son tratando de defenderse. Si es, vemos que esta caída no ha logrado ganar son de lucha tan intensa. Esto está genial, indudablemente la tercera caída será la mejor. Yo soy mucho más poderoso que tú, te lo demostraré. Otra vez la burla al trigo, y lo que quieras, pero aquí faltan mañas. Sorprendente, creo que se están olvidando de ponerse a pelear. Veamos en qué termina esta batalla. Basta ya de palabras. Pienso un número y te lo adivinaré. Oh, esto es increíble. Parece que Sombre está aplicando un problema vento, pero ¿por qué han dejado de luchar? Nadie lo sabe. ¡Uy, qué miedo, zumbiditos! Mira cómo tiemblo. <risa> ¡Ya me cansaste! Ahora el número que pensaste, multiplícalo por tres. ¡Oh! ¿Me estás hablando en serio? Muy bien, está bien, ya lo hice, ¿y ahora qué? Y al parecer las comadritas se pidieron a platicar. Esto es algo que nunca te he visto en la gran mayoría. ¿Ahora? ¡Suma cinco! ¡Ya está! ¡Me dio veintitrés! 
el número que pensaste fue el 6. Te lo dije, soy más inteligente que tú. ¿Qué? Así es. ¿Cómo lo supiste? Sorprendente. Vento ha caído a la lona. No tiene fuerzas para levantarse. El referido empieza a dar el conteo. Uno, dos, tres. No lo puedo creer. Son pudo derrotar al campeón de campeones. Esto jamás lo habríamos imaginado. ¿Lo ves? Puede más la inteligencia que la fuerza. Que quede claro. Esta ha sido una gran batalla. Oye, ¿cómo le hizo? ¿Cómo lo adivinó? Obvio. A ver, pienso un número. ¿El 8? No, no me lo diga. Solo piénsalo. Si no, ¿cómo pretendes que te lo explique? Ya. A ver, adivínalo. Como es un número que tú pensaste y desconozco, lo represento con la letra X. Para que pueda decírtelo, hay que realizar algunas operaciones. Primero, multiplícalo por 3. Ya que lo hayas hecho, sumale 5. Ahora dime el resultado que te dio. Mm, 23. Pon atención, el número que pensaste lo represento con la letra X. Primero te pedí que multiplicaras por 3, quedando 3x, después que le sumaras 5, quedando 3x más 5. Es así como llegaste a 23, y todo se puede representar así, 3x más 5 igual a 23. Con estos datos es sencillo conocer el número que pensaste, te explico. Para saberlo debemos despejar la x, observa. El número 5 está sumando. Restemos 5 en ambos lados para que no se altere la igualdad. Entonces nos queda 3x igual a 18. Ahora, el número 3 está multiplicando. Dividamos entre 3 en ambos lados para que no se altere la igualdad. Por lo tanto, al dividir 3 sobre sí mismo nos queda 1x. Pero recuerda que todo número multiplicado por 1 da la misma cantidad. De esta manera, X queda sola. Del otro lado de la igualdad, 18 entre 3 nos da 6. Por eso, el número que pensaste fue el 6. ¿O me equivoco? No, pero ahora sé por qué Som es más inteligente que Bento. Sí, así como yo soy más que tú. Y no pongas esa cara. Si no te va a pasar lo que avento. No me hagas reír. Ah, sí. Pues, pues toma. Te demostraré que puedo ser más inteligente que tú. Ay, ajá. Pues te reto a ti y a ellos a que lo intenten. ¿Podrán? Okay, this this was our first uh, short movie that our people developed uh, last year. We uh, in this moment we consider we are in a process of learning how to use the screen. But uh, uh, we consider this uh, very important for us, our Can country. You see my phone that's okay. Excuse me. Uh, this kind of movie, uh, we are going to um, develop 45 movies between 9 and 15 minutes in different themas in mathematics according to the curricula. And uh, it's a very hard uh, work because uh, we never, <laughs> or me, 
and never I had uh, this uh, doing this kind of work. Uh, I am teach, but uh, I don't know how to use Blender, how to do movies, and it's a, it's a interesting our work. Uh, the voices, for example, uh, Hector here is a interesting actor <laughs> in, with these movies. Okay, uh, more. Uh, how we are using Blender? Please, please, please. No, again, Hector. Okay. Okay. Our model. Uh, in three parts, we consider in three parts. It's the first part is in my responsibility. Uh, we uh, write a problem according to the curriculum, mathematical problem. After uh, we read a literal script with uh, animation points, uh, uh, with in this case a wrestling uh, and fighting environment about uh, market research in several schools we decide to use uh, fighting. After football in Mexico is passion uh, fighting with the boys. Uh, after storyboard, story real, characters, rigging, atmosphere. After we place uh, characters and we reviewed uh, in each moment the mathematical part is very hard because uh, it use, uh, we need to, to do uh, things very well we can uh, uh, to do browns. Okay, after animation, finally edition and render. Okay, this is our process in this case. Uh, or example, I would like to show you our example. This example is about geometry with other characters. We had different characters for each grade. Uh, for, uh, the first movie was uh, for the first grade in secondary school. This movie is in the second grade uh, in, in Environment Fighting 2. I would like to show you the next example. This movie is about a problem in geometry. No? Wait a moment, please. Okay. Y en otras noticias tenemos un enlace con uno de nuestros reporteros desde el centro de la ciudad. Adelante, Mario. Buenas tardes. Estoy aquí en uno de los tradicionales tianguis de Ciudad Matépolis y me acabo de encontrar los famosos signos igual uno e igual dos haciendo algunas compras.
ahora dónde estaremos? Parece que alguien se acerca. Sí, sí, ya vi. Tengo miedo. <risa> Con que ustedes son los famosos signos de igual, los únicos inigualables constructores de Matépolis. Ah, pero qué pequeños son, tan insignificantes. Los imaginaba mucho más fuertes y grandes. Se preguntarán qué hacen aquí, ¿cierto? Ustedes están aquí porque tienen que hacer algo para mí. ¿Y qué es eso que podemos hacer por usted? Es muy simple. Todos conocen la gran arena de Ciudad Matépolis. Es ahí donde las más grandes contiendas tienen lugar. Sin embargo, un luchador de mi rango merece tener su propia arena. Y eso es lo que harán. Pero usted perfectamente sabe que eso haría enfurecer a su majestad álgebra, nuestro gobernante. No me interesa lo que piense el gran álgebra. Yo seré el primer luchador algebraico con un ring hexagonal. Y ustedes lo construirán para mí. De lo contrario, jamás saldrán de aquí. No me haga reír. ¿Un ring hexagonal? ¡Eso no existe! ¡No seas igualado! <risa> ¡Te dijo igualado! <risa> ¡Basta! ¿Acaso no saben quién soy? Para mí no hay, ni habrá imposibles. Y si construir un ring hexagonal lo es, ustedes famosos signos lo harán realidad. A partir de este momento y hasta mañana, antes de que el sol se oculte, construirán un ring hexagonal. Ahora síganme, les mostraré dónde tienen que trabajar. ¿Están sordos o qué? ¡Muévanse! Las consecuencias ya las conocen. Así que a trabajar si quieren salir de aquí. ¿Y ahora qué vamos a hacer? Tenemos que contarle a su majestad a Álgebra. Ay, primero, tenemos que ver la manera de salir de aquí. Y para eso, tenemos que hacer lo que División dice. Pero eso es imposible. Nos vamos a quedar para siempre aquí. Siempre, aquí, siempre. Pero eso es imposible. Di algo que no sepamos. Bueno, bueno, ya. Tenemos que trabajar. Mm, mira, estos triángulos de allá nos pueden servir. Pero, son diferentes, ¿no? O, ¿O son iguales? Ah, cómo molestas. Parece que no fuiste a la escuela. Esto que ves aquí se llama triángulo isósceles porque dos de sus lados miden lo mismo y el otro no. ¿Ves? ¡Uah! Mm, oye, creo que no 
va a caber ahí ese triángulo. Tranquilo, hay más ángulos allá. Ve por ellos. Es más, mientras yo veo en qué vértice se unen los triángulos. Vértice. El amargado cuenta chistes. Vértice es este punto donde se unen estos dos lados del triángulo. Como este y este. Un triángulo tiene tres vértices. Pues mira, la palabra chistosa vértice es este punto. Y este vértice es de este ángulo. De este ángulo. De este ángulo. De este otro. Y de este ángulo también. Pero hay un hueco. Sí, es cierto. Pues encimemos algo ya. No, no podemos hacer eso. El ring no quedará bien. Mm, tienes razón. Tenemos que cubrir todo, sin dejar huecos y sin encimar nada. Es más, igual que en el transportador, en total son 360 grados. ¿Qué qué? ¿De qué hablas? Observa, queremos hacer un ring hexagonal. Para cubrir el área total necesitamos ir de 0 grados, pasando por los 90 grados, los 180 grados, 270 grados, hasta completarlo y así cubrir los 360 grados. Esto quiere decir que la suma de los ángulos interiores en el vértice común debe ser igual a 360 grados. Pero nos falta un triángulo que uno de sus ángulos interiores mida 10 grados. No va a funcionar. Si ocupamos otro triángulo isósceles, no cabrá. Oye, ¿me vas a ayudar o qué? Sí, 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 sí. Pero no olvides que también hay otros triángulos allá. Sus tres lados miden lo mismo. Y por si no lo sabes, se llaman triángulos equiláteros. Y sus ángulos miden también lo mismo. Tal vez nos sirva, ¿no? Yo te ayudo. Miren 60 grados cada uno de sus ángulos. Obviamente, ya te lo había dicho. Un triángulo equilátero tiene sus tres lados iguales. Y sus ángulos interiores son iguales. Y como la suma de los ángulos interiores debe medir 180 grados, cada uno de sus ángulos mide 60 grados. Ya sé. Pero, ¿cuántos triángulos equiláteros tenemos? No lo sé. Trae todos los que encuentres. ¿Por qué trae solo seis triángulos? Recuerda, 6 por 60 grados es igual a 360 grados. No necesitamos más. ¿Me ayudas a colocarlos? hacer para después buscar la manera de escapar. ¡Despierte! Ay, mamá. Cinco minutitos más. ¡Despierta! ¡Despierta! ¡División está aquí! Debo decir que mi arena quedó fantástica Simple y sencillamente lo que pedí Debo agradecerles Y no se preocupen Mis sirvientes los llevarán a casa Y si te teletransporto a mi casa Podrías hacer un ring sin ningún hueco y sin encimar las figuras, pero ahora con pentágonos regulares, ¿serás tan eficiente como igual 1 e igual 2? Okay. 
Okay, it is the second uh, short field. It's in a, about a, a geometry problem, tessellation, a very important theme in curricula. Then uh, I would like to uh, to mention several points more. The first one is uh, we uh, on, uh, also are using. Okay. Okay, again. Again, a problem. Sorry. Okay. It's the devil. Yeah. Until Hector try to uh, solve the problem, I would like to mention uh, uh, we are okay. We, we also are using Blender with uh, augmented reality, short fields, more short than this, uh, these two fields, uh, and uh, two in our. Uh, digital books, son like a uh, tool designed. Okay, uh, finally, I would like to mention uh, the following points in very important for us. What impacts and benefits uh, can uh, to obtain with, with a mathematical, uh, open mathematica are the followings. For example, open mathematica had to impact in thousands of students only in our region uh, where our company is located and we are very near of the biggest uh, market in the world, Mexico City, with uh, 20 million of persons and more of 2 million of students between 12 and 16, 15 years old. Uh, improving the learning of mathematics is in our region is very important for the government in Mexico. But the major impact it will be economic in the future. In addition, uh, the training of experts in, in, with in this project, we had a um, resource of the government and we had a new employees in, in, in our company. And uh, how we are going to test and marketing this product for us is very important. We uh, had an area on marketing that they are uh, uh, doing a lot of work about how we can uh, to market uh, this product in all the schools or in, in all countries. In this moment, we are uh, related with the government authorities in Mexico, and we are going to try to, to move our uh, product in, in all the schools in Mexico, six millions. If we had 5%, fantastic for us. And in Latin America, we had a partner, a business partner called Grupo Educare, and they uh, work with uh, 3,000 schools in Central, South America, and Mexico. Uh, I conclude saying the, the following. Uh, for uh, us, Discover Blender was fantastic because it's free, <laughs> okay. Uh, we saved uh, a lot, a lot of money, uh, but uh, I consider Blender a community most uh, proud about possibilities to use Blender to try to solve a very important problem for us, education in, in mathematics. Actually, uh, we, we need uh, to finish this project the next year, in 2011, 
and begin to uh, apply our project in the schools maybe 2011 or 2012. And in this moment, we begin other projects uh, uh, more bigger than. Uh, this project is the same, but uh, with the students between six and 12 years. And in Mexico, uh, there are 15 million, more than 15 million students uh, between six and, and 12 years. Um, uh, we are going to uh, begin other projects in science, for example. And uh, I surely, we are surely, that Blender could be do a, a lot of things for us. Okay, this is uh, our use that we are doing of Blender. I don't know if you had uh, some questions, please. Okay. Okay, uh, one, uh, yes, um, in this, uh, our product uh, had uh, several parts, five parts. They are not in this moment interacted, uh, like movies, like the movie only in this part. But with augmented reality, try to do interactive, and with the digital books, try to do interactive, and, and, and when, uh, it's, a, it's very difficult, maybe in the future, with a with a video game, uh, other project in our mind, maybe, but it's one of the problems in this moment. Okay. Other questions? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, while the next guys are going to set up their. Uh, uh, equipment. Um, I would like to quickly uh, mention already some slight changes we will have in the program for tomorrow. And that's um, tomorrow uh, 12 o'clock in the salon uh, is missing the uh, presentation of Wolfgang about the making of Elephant's Dream, the 3D version. That is now a screening in, in a small theater. And at uh, 12.30, the session of Ton Rosendahl is going to be moved to the small theater. And instead, in the salon will be a session by David and Andy doing some quick uh, modeling and painting session. And further, I think we are running a little bit late, but we still should be able to manage for today. Um, does anybody have a DVI to VGA uh, adapter for for a Mac? Like a, uh, what? 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 Okay, so ah. Oh, so he's coming. Okay. But but he should have heard yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So, so uh, yeah. And uh, I don't seem to have sound here. Do we have sound? <coughs> there is no sound still? Yeah, he has um, to put it up. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, wait, you have to. Oh, yeah. oh, I hear something. Yeah, there is sound. Sound. That sounds good. And the uh, XP. Okay, works.
um, well worth what? spectacle anyway. There he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you have to be on. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll see. So if we get lost here, there's a program. That's great. Are we starting? Or? Yeah. 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 Okay. Shall we go? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we are. I'm Miroslav Brozovic, and uh, five of us are representing Tosme, which is uh, training in open source media instruments, and mainly focused on Blender. So we're gathered here today to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, training itself, how long it's been going on, who are the people involved in it, and. Uh, I don't know, uh, later on, after the introductory part, we will show you a video that we made this year. It was uh, from the advanced course, and uh, you will get some general idea of how it was there, and what we did, how many people were involved. But uh, before that, uh, I would like to give a microphone to Petko Durmana, who is the organizer from Interspace, and who is doing TOSMI for uh, four years now. And let's hear it for him, from him. Uh, thank you. Uh, Interspace is, uh, was created 12 years ago as an uh, artist-run organization and it's based in Sofia, Bulgaria. As Miro said, we started this training four years ago. Uh, initially, it was for uh, all available multimedia instruments that are open source. The last TOSMI was focused only on Blender and next year TOSMIS that some of the trainers are going to talk about is going to be uh, focused on, on Blender as well. Uh, what is important for me to say as organizer is that um, before we, we organized this training in Sofia in the, in the downtown but uh, next year we are moving to the mountain in a very nice hotel with swimming pool and uh, it's going to be a really good adventure uh, yeah advent adventure of the training okay before we go on to the video i would just like to represent the team that is here uh, with me uh, you know, Petko Durmana, and uh, by him is uh, Luciano, and uh, Sebastian Koenig, and of course you probably know Basam Kordali. So uh, the three of us, uh, Sebastian, Basam, and me, were the trainers this year. Luciano is joining us as a trainee, and I see in the audience there are also a couple of people that attended the course, and really nice to see you all. And so, uh, shall we get on with the video, or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Enjoy, it's like 10 minutes, not long, so enjoy. Tosmi is uh, training in open source multimedia instruments. Uh, training that we started four years ago and um, it promotes the advantages of using open source instruments when working with multimedia. Uh, my name is Mess and I come from Denmark uh, and I'm currently studying uh, at a school called the Animation Workshop, which is situated in Vibo. I was here last year doing the introduction course to Blender. And uh, this time around, I am here for uh, both two weeks, uh, the introduction course and the Blender Advanced course. My reasons for coming, one reason would be to 
to network, to meet other people who are doing 3D and uh, exchange experiences to learn Blender, which is uh, amazing 3D software. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> we try to combine, to, to create good team of trainers that not only work well together, but also provide one uh, completed product to the trainees. Traditionally, we invite Bassam Kurdali, who is one of the most skilled blender animators and filmmakers. And also, we always try to have one trainer that somehow represents the region. In this year, this is Miroslav Brozovic from Croatia, who is one of the leaders of the Blender community in the country. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so TOSMI has uh, two parts uh, to the training. There's like lecture part and the practical part. And um, both are very intensive. And I think um, the kind of uh, nicest surprise that you get is how quickly people learn. We have some students who don't have any prior 3D experience at all, and, uh, but they do have an art background, and you find them like doing everything um, with the class, and uh, that's really, really kind of cool. For modeling, at least, it changed my way of doing things. I, I'm much faster in, in Blender than any other tool. So, I decided maybe I could like even continue specializing on it and learn how to how to work it throughoutly because I've seen guys like Bassam that they do everything in Blender. This year we didn't focus on modeling for the advanced class. We actually barely touched on it and we just expected students to kind of learn it on their own during the practical session and we focused more on rigging and animation because those are tools that you can't discover normally. I think when you start out using Blender and don't have anybody that you can ask how is, how is that, how is this, you always have to go to the internet and search for the stuff and for the answers. It's just really hard and annoying to learn Blender. Now when you duplicate bones, it's going to duplicate the constraints on them too and it'll keep them like internal, so like it'll flip them to the right one. So we're just going to first of all hit Shift D and duplicate the bones. And we can put this anywhere. We can put that right there if you want, okay? No problem. Then we're going to do W to bring up the specials menu. And we're going to flip the names so they get called dot right. Then I'm going to select my original bones. Let's see, make sure that we can see everything. And then because we have x-axis mirror editing on, I can hit G. Enter. Fastest possible way. Go into edit mode. The constraints are already here with the right bones on them. Yeah, and the right names. This year we decided to stress mainly on the new version of Blender 2.5, but also to provide something that never been connected before with Blender. Uh, and this is camera tracking that, were, that was covered by our German trainer Sebastian Koenig. Everybody wanted to do camera tracking. Uh, at first I didn't want to do that, but as some of the guys would like to uh, integrate 3D stuff into a scene, into some uh, footage, we went outside and filmed some places in Sofia and now um, the project is to insert a robot into a scene in Sofia. Um, moving from the face to there, so we have a clean shot. Uh -huh. So we don't have. To Might not be uh, a so problem. We'll pass after the tree. Maybe right. you just start here, mm -hmm. or no, even there, here, go there, and then this guy is coming, and you just. Do we get scared or don't we get scared? Oh, a little. Away. Yeah, a bit, like, oh. maybe, yeah. The workflow is like, uh, at first everybody has to model something, and when that is done, um, somebody has to do the rigging, we have to uh, integrate these models into the scene. So it's really interesting to see how these guys um, uh, split the work, 
and work together uh, in a team that is already only existing for a few days. Learning, I feel, you meet some problems that you have to solve, which you would never have met if it have been planned out assignment from the start. Like Sebastian, that even though he uses Blender, he's not a full Blender guy. So he, he uses Blender and he mixes it up with like tools like Scene Size or V-Ray. So you can really see how to put it into a pipeline and work it out really well and take advantage of it. I was really surprised when I was uh, lecturing about compositing and uh, notes and all these things and then go around and see that everybody just had their really complex note setups and that was working really, really good. Most of them are constantly uh, asking questions and trying to do uh, slightly too ambitious things in the uh, frame of time that we give them. So we have to make sure that they actually uh, set themselves a task that they can finish uh, and not one that's just unrealistic and that won't be uh, possible. And I have the impression that the students also like this uh, relaxed atmosphere. So even though you should be there at half past nine, um, you won't get hurt when you come at ten. We were able to uh, extend the lessons longer than we wanted to do. It was just easy. Because they put so much information in one week, then afterwards you can start working and doing stuff right away because you almost pretty much know all of the steps of, of a production environment. So you know modeling, you know texturing, rigging, animation, blah, 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 blah. And so you can just go back home and do your own project right away doesn't mean that you're not gonna find anything that you can do, but like still you can you can work a lot with it. That's what it happened to me at least. Like last year, I started working right away with Blender, and I was very comfortable with it after just one week. I'm really proud that some of them are coming back, applying next year, or also recommending our training to friends and uh, colleagues. Actually, this is the future of our training, the marketing future of our training, because we do believe it's creating a very good image of the only one, a professional blender training, and definitely the only one professional training in open source multimedia instruments around Europe. We, we want to make it more and more professional, even to start some branches, because we do believe our model is so successful that can be used for many, many more trainings and educational programs. So I was trying to ask about the, how it was going to be next year. With the, I heard some rumors about it was going to move, and he said, well, you shouldn't apply me. Ah, he didn't say that. He said that there was other people that should be on the course, which makes all kinds of sense because uh, yeah. I've already been there two times, and and I don't know. Even though I'm not so good with Blender, I would really like uh, to be better. Okay, so uh, in the video you got some idea how it was, but uh, now we would like to talk a little bit about a little bit more about it. And first of all, uh, we I don't know we should say something about how the day is split it up. So you may have heard that uh, it's split it into uh, lecture part and practical part, and uh, the course itself uh, lasts for six days. It's from Monday to Saturday. But only five days, first five days have the lecture part and the last day is reserved for the practical part, for finishing their projects. A uh, little bit about the projects, we'll, uh, about the project we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But uh, for the lecture part, we try to do everything in the morning until the lunch time, something like two o'clock. And after the lunch, to get on to the practical part, but as always, this may get uh, stretched out to something like in the late afternoon, and they 
should finish their daily works until 7, but it, uh, many times it gets until 9 or 10 o'clock. And uh, the last day everybody is already exhausted, really exhausted. And when we're trying to finish uh, the project, we try to get it as quickly as possible, but it's just not going <laughs> as we want to. Okay, so on uh, each course, uh, this year there were two courses. It was the basic blender and the advanced blender. Uh, and uh, on each course there is 15 people. And we try to split them into teams uh, that we think best uh, fit one another. And that would be good for the team. So uh, people with different skills apply and we try to combine those skills in order to make a good team so they can work together well. Of course, there are always many problems, but some, somehow we try to avoid this, but it's impossible. But uh, most of the time we just have a lot of fun, even though it lasts for like 10 hours a day or so, it's uh, still not that exhausting as it, it, it may sound. Uh, okay, so now... Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, uh, maybe one more uh, thing about the practical part. Um, so, as uh, you already mentioned, we have to uh, split uh, these uh, 14 or 15 students into two teams, so um, so that we uh, also can uh, split ourselves. So, we are three teachers and we can go around and um, basically there are two uh, teachers assigned to a team. So, we not only have to split the students based on their skills, but also on our own skills. So I wouldn't do rigging ever. Um, so that was uh, Bassam's thing for Team Strawberry, I think. Team Strawberry and Team Cherry was my team. And that was um, compositing. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the practical part is not only that everybody has their own project and has to work on that, but they, they have a team project. So um, that is something that I find very interesting for teaching, that you um, not only have people doing their own things, but also uh, have to work together in a team. So it's like a simulation of a studio setup, which is, of course, very, uh, um, very short and very um, stressful in the end. But um, yeah, that's uh, also maybe a simulation of a real-world process with a deadline in the end. So we were like the clients. We wanted to have the, the result. And the students have to come up with a way to collaborate, um, to split their skills, and um, yeah, work together on one project. In my case, that was uh, compositing, and as you've seen with uh, camera tracking. Um, and yeah, that was uh, very interesting. Also, from a teaching point of view, it was uh, very nice to see this col collaboration approach. Um, I once had a course at a university where I had to uh, teach uh, alone one group of 20 people and, um, well, everybody had their own project and that didn't work out that well as this approach does work. And I think it's also more fun to do it in a team um, because you have, well, the, the group is growing together. I don't know what you say. Um, and that's also something good for the evening because you have a team and uh, you much more quickly get into touch with each other, other and um, you, yeah, you will have more to talk about in the evening when you're working in a team. So yeah, I thought that was uh, very nice and um, yeah, it was a really good time. And yeah, maybe uh, Bassam? <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to say something about the lecture part. Uh, we tried to split since we have only five days to do everything that we plan to do. Uh, for instance, this year it was uh, animation and rigging, and on the other hand it was compositing. It's really hard to split everything into just five days, but somehow we try to follow uh, some kind of a rule that uh, on the first day you learn something and in the afternoon on the practical part you try to use that skills that you learned. Of course, you cannot use it right away, but somehow we try to keep in mind that uh, on a specific day in the lecture part we will have uh, this session in the afternoon in the practical part so the people will use and we can help them uh, with the newly learned skills okay so uh, you're going to talk about the practical part okay 
Okay, so a little bit about the uh, practical part. Um, I'll focus on Team Strawberry since I was like the official mentor of that team. So um, basically we split up uh, into two teams and there's a certain amount of freedom in choosing a project that the team will do. So we uh, imposed kind of a general theme on uh, our students. So they were supposed to do uh, something called after the battle. Uh, so imagine that there has been some kind of uh, big fight and uh, the, the battle has finished and there's a victor and the vanquished army and you know have a scene depicting that. And uh, the class got together and brainstormed ideas and they decided that their battle was going to be between um, plastic zombie Barbie dolls and uh, very cute stuffed animals. Um, and so uh, they basically um, made two shots where um, these, they modeled um, a lot of toys, um, rigged them, uh, and animated them, and they had some kind of like a reservoir dog team of, of victorious Barbies, like leaving this, this, this battlefield with like, you know, these dead and dying cute animals kind of flying around on the ground. So it's all taking part in like a, an attic somewhere where these toys are having a fight. And uh, of course, they also had an explosion at the end. Um, I think that's a standard thing. So we focused, um, we tried to keep it uh, stuck in the animation world uh, for our team. So uh, most of the students uh, rigged a character, at least one and uh, did some animation on that character and they, they kind of did a variety of different things. Um, and it was uh, pretty cool. Uh, some of the students uh, were returning, so we already kind of had an idea of their skills. Um, some of them were um, uh, people who hadn't done any 3D at all. Uh, we had one student who um, maybe did some of the best animation that was on that project. And she uh, had done traditional animation and After Effects. She had no 3D experience before, and it was just really kind of cool to see that, like you know, she could, after only a few hours of lecture in a day, she can actually like make stuff and do models and animate and 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 even even do some rigging, which is pretty technical stuff. Um, also, um, we didn't really exclusively stick with our own team, so. Um, Sebastian and I and Miro kind of walked around the whole class so I could go over and help the guys with, um, with, with some rigging problems. I think the example in the video is, is actually uh, on Team Cherry's side, uh, rigging the robot that gets composited into the uh, VFX shot. Um, so it's kind of a cool experience. Um, it's also good. We try to um, keep it uh, in a way that there's a complete project that you do. Um, so we don't just teach like a little bit of animation or a little bit of this. We uh, try to teach um, as much as you can in a week uh, to like set up a production pipeline and really focus hard on finishing something. Um, so that by the end of the week, people have used SVN, they've managed their project, they've done um, you know, relative linking between files, um, they've uh, pushed their renders through, they've, they've done animation, rigging, modeling, compositing, and finished something. And so when they go home and uh, do their own projects, uh, they can hopefully uh, have an idea of, of the steps. So they don't just sit there and uh, wanting to do an animation, but having this kind of mystery about how you get it to finish. They've already done that, been there and done that, so it should be uh, more simple. Um, and another kind of nice thing is that they get to uh, work with other people, um, uh, collaborate with them, and it's a kind of, um, it's kind of intense. It's like a little bit of a, of a boot camp um, because you're working very long hours to really like learn, kind of condense like maybe a month worth of learning in one week. Um, and so by the end of the time, people know each other very well. They've gone angry and forgiven each other, and they can you know be friends. And um, I think uh, some of them might be working together. Um, uh, after Tosmi, having met there, but uh, I'll let other people tell that story. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Is your so um, I was one of the students. I come two years consecutive. I really enjoyed the the, the module. Uh, the way they teach is actually really fun, and they try to push as much much information in your head as they can, which is really awesome. Uh, at the beginning, it doesn't feel so good because you are kind of overwhelmed by all of this information. But at the end, it pays off. Um, my story here is uh, I'm with Ndira over there. Uh, she she is a French woman and she makes films. And so we met over there in Bulgaria to to study Blender, and we ended up making a film that we'll be presenting tomorrow. So that's one of the big things. Not only uh, just in any uh, studying studying course like this. You get to meet people from every, everywhere around. Actually, we had like, I don't know, at least six or seven different countries, which was really nice because you get to meet so many cultures and help each other out. And then you keep on making connections and meet, meeting people that are around this community. And so as a student, for me, it was really fantastic because after that, like, I stayed around and made another film. And it was only with the tools that they, these guys taught me. So. I think, I think it's a great experience for anybody who wants to join. Uh, it's a week of a lot of work, but then again, after a lot of work every day, you have a lot of fun with the teachers and with everybody around. The people is very welcoming. They're all open to learning and to meeting new people. And plus, as well as we have like wonderful teachers, we have like other students that are in the same tune as we are, and so we all also help each other during the course, which makes it so much easier. And so, yeah. I think that's that's my little son, Graham. Uh, oh no, it's uh, actually Petco probably. Well. <laughs> future of fu future plans for future plans. yes, future plans. <laughs> okay, uh, we should discuss something about uh, future plans of Tosmi. So uh, we still don't have a exact schedule or exact vision how it's going to be, but. Uh, we were talking something about making uh, a course a little bit more advanced than it was this year, even more advanced, and we are going to focus on some kind of uh, visual effects in a video, so uh, we should get uh, this program soon and uh, it will be on a website. Okay, you have it open, it's tosmi.org. And uh, as soon as uh, we figure out how it's going to be, uh, you can all uh, check it out there. And uh, we should also, also mention that uh, TOSMI is open uh, for anybody from the European Union and some of the surrounding countries. So it's not really open for everybody. But uh, the, actually, it, uh, there are also some scholarships uh, that you can apl apply for. And it's all, it will all be in the in the section in the website that you can find this information at and find out uh, how to apply and it's going to be in uh, August I think also next year yes and it's uh, situated in uh, Bulgaria uh, last year's it was uh, in Sofia but uh, next year the idea is to move it into the mountains as Petko said so the environment is going to be a little bit different than this but uh, it should be a lot of fun, also. Uh, okay, do we have anything more? No, let's okay, uh, do you have any questions, maybe? Okay. <laughs> and I'm always um, a, a feeling a little bit guilty, you know, when I see people training Blender, and there's no developer around or somebody to fix everything uh, behind your backs, because it's, I mean, you've been doing Blender 2.5, it's okay, right? But if you have open source like Blender, which is continuously in development, I, I've done training in Amsterdam in Blender Institute several times, and you get so many moments that when you hit some kind of block, and then there, that crashes, and that doesn't work yet, so you have to go around it, and then... Uh, so did, did that give you problems? Did you yes. have to do a lot of hacking and, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how she laughs. Uh, I, so I can testify that we at least had two major bugs happen during, uh, during the course. And one of them, I just went on IRC and asked, uh, I forgot who fixed it now, but it was fixed in <laughs> the next day. So, you know, so at least one of them was fixed, but 
uh, and we reported or tried to report all the bugs we made, we found and make nice bug reports for people. Um, I'm thinking, I think one of them was moving stuff to a different layer was not working and that might not be quite fixed yet. And <laughs> the other one is um, uh, when you kind of did the repeat operator thing, it would like make your previously selected object disappear without any possibility of undo and bringing it back. So someone would have modeled something really nice for like half an hour and then added a, a sphere and then went to change the number of segments on the sphere and their nice bunny rabbit that been modeling for 20 minutes went poof <laughs> and gone. Nowhere to be found, no undo, no recovery file, nothing left. Um, that got fixed. You've been doing a beginner course of people training people Blender who never used it before. Uh, can you give any uh, remark about like how did it work for 2.5? Do you think it was a bit easier or more difficult, or did they pick it up? Did you configure key maps for people to make it more compatible, or did you do anything to make that easier for people? I, I did point out people to the uh, user preferences to change key maps. So I mentioned some things like swapping the mouse selection order and also changing the trackball, uh, especially because some people come from Maya, so they're used to using um, um, a turntable. Um, we didn't actually encourage people to change their preferences until, unless they really couldn't live with the defaults because it's much easier when you're teaching to um, kind of know that everyone's using the same defaults because oftentimes you go to help someone at their machine and if they've changed too many things, uh, then it becomes a little bit uh, touchy and also because if you're talking to the whole class, you can be more sure that you're saying the same thing that applies to everybody. I mean, with, with the right select, you can always remember not to say right click or left click and just say select, you know. Um, but even then, uh, for the beginner's course especially, some people need you to tell them what button to press. Like, they don't remember. If you say select, um, somebody might raise their hand and say, how do I select again, you know? And, and so it's better to stick with the default. I think Sebastian had something to say, no? No, no. no. <laughs> Move to the next, one question from the audience. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the camera tracking. Uh, how did you do that, with Blender or no. with uh, third party uh, programs? I did it with uh, Synthize and um, it wasn't really part of the course. I just, uh, um, they wanted it, so I'm not guilty for doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, uh, we just filmed it and then I tracked it uh, in Synthize and gave them the finished track. And that's what they worked with. Going one. Ah. <laughs> Monica. Thanks. Uh, these uh, courses are, uh, have you ever thought of having online courses? So I, I really <laughs> like the, the residential course for one, one week, but uh, maybe. He's the boss. Okay, I can answer. Um, I know that there are so, very, so many good courses, online courses. Uh, you can download and you stay alone. Ah, you mean? Online courses, we have a feature which is not in front of you, but it's in front of another computer which is oh, one to one. on. Um, not one to many, but uh, with a teacher present and uh, directly. To, to be honest, um, because my background, I'm media artist. And I switched to new media in 97 with online 3D projects, multi user, etc., etc. I don't. I really prefer the physical trainings and all the physical events like like Blender conference. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is not related to Trust Me, but um, I thought of something like that, like a Blender support desk where you can uh, go with Skype and TeamViewer and have uh, online support for, um, so, but it's not related to Trust Me. Okay, hey, thank you very much.
Uh, next is Pedro Bastos about facial constraints. Two minutes per week and then we continue. John, you don't, uh, you have an um, open office or a working office here, and other places in the church. I'm sorry? Yes, so it's, I don't have office. Uh, it's Windows, and then Windows. <laughs> uh, um, I, can, save it out. I can bring my machine if you want to use my machine. Right, I have a PPS an exporter. Does this uh, read PPS? Hmm? It's exported from PowerPoint. Does it read? If you don't have PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Right. I have PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm have going to pick you have a laptop for them? Yes. Yeah? I'm going to pick, right. pick it up. Okay. It's going to be okay. Great. Okay. Really not used to Macintosh. 
I like the design. I like the architecture. Uh, but uh, working with Blender and Macintosh is really bad. <laughs> no problem. Where is the trash in here? Just wait a minute, just wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I prefer it's myself too. <laughs> it's just sleeping. <laughs> yeah, this is not anymore. What? This is not anymore a laptop. So cool. Do you need a button? No, no, just okay, good. I think what happens with videos, we have to do it. Do There will also be another presentation being shown. I'm not sure if yet. Okay, so oh, just a moment, just a moment. I'm going to close this one. Right, right. So let's keep this secret. Okay. So where's the USB? There are four ports. Okay. So you can already connect them. Let's try Or you're going to sit there. Right there. No, no, try here and then we'll transmit the picture. Oh, you can already. Oh, you want me to? Yeah. Okay, sure. Not a problem. Is this uh, just a uh, one file or a folder? Well, you have to go to HD. And oh, you have to go to Pick, Inside, and Videos, and the PPSX. Copy those two. Yes, Not the PPSX? No, that's the editor. But you can be it as well. Oh, that's just okay. Yeah, that's in case. Was it Facebook or Space? Yeah, for sure. I mean, from the Colada all the repository. It looks very simple. Uh, I did put it on the website. But I don't okay. remember. It's Probably tell us something. Yes. Uh, the movie. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's not uh, my default. Yeah. So you, you probably have to do it. What? So just no, the, the movie runs inside. Okay, it should run. If it doesn't, yeah. let's try and run it from the from the from the MPTX. Yeah. 